like, oh, can we also just talk about how fucking insane that Heisenberg boss battle is? You were literally driving a mini tank with a turret, rockets, and a chainsaw to block oh, attacks. It's like, so good. The rest it's, of that game is like relatively like based in reality, and this is just like it's so um, fucking insane. You're fighting I'll, a giant flesh metal <laughs> amalgamation, and then it goes like full fucking Final Fantasy, where you're like floating in the air trying to get back into your little tank and shooting at it. It is so fucking dumb, and I fucking love it. It's it's so great. Uh, it, I'll give you this little ditty: Transformers, Ethan in disguise. <laughs> 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 yes no true exactly exactly 100 percent. that battle was so uh very much a lot of the boss battles in this game were like from resident evil 4 onward up to six, up to six. like basically resident evil 4 through 6 was just these giant ass boss fights that were just out of this world like insane uh freaking dimitrescu was um she gave me such resident evil 6 vibes with her like Ooh. crazy like she, she gave me resident evil f uh 4 vibes because of like she came up out of like the dragon thing and she was like controlling it from the back of it with um salazar where salazar was like controlling that beast or whatever in in resident evil 4 um there was a lot of salazar vibes i felt a mm -hmm. lot of like a lot of the bosses were kind of similar to salazar in that way um she got hotter in that form too just saying oh my god stop <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh yes i okay i will say something about the Dim dimetrescu uh boss battle so the lines say what you will about like the one liners or whatever but some of the lines in this in the the vocal lines in this game were absolutely fantastic for the tone and, and for the moment just when you're falling with her down the tower in that last moment before she perishes uh is just she says um what was it uh witness your end or something and and uh feel despair or fall into despair or something it was just like it was so reminiscent of like uh, yeah that but also like uh just like old gothic like dracula and stuff like it's all about yes witness my glory and and fall into despair and and you know it just it's it just that gothicness nice. just it was uh it was great it was great nice. that <laughs> what flies flies oh flies. yeah the uh the daughters the they're not even Resident Evil flies they're like oh these flies fucking sound like people yeah, yeah. like wow that's such Resident Evil shit like that freaking, that freaking blew my mind as well we're talking about the flies when you're in uh Heisenberg's factory you come across a file that talks about different test subjects and Marguerite Baker was one of the test subjects for the flies and so Dude. it was like I mean that makes sense holy shit like when did that happen like what <laughs> that, like she was it, it's, I don't, it's so weird because even the dlc for seven um i forget what it's called daughters or something it, it contradicts the the logic of the main story so i don't know like how solidly i would want to take that information because it's it's already previously existing contradiction but uh, if we want to talk about the flies, uh, Lady uh, Demetresk's daughters, like they, they were corpses and then they put flies on them and the flies like absorb the body. So you're not even fighting like necessarily person. It's literally like B.O.W. flies. And that's how they're able to go. Like, around. They're like they're like they're sort of like mentioned to just exist in the wild, like and that they were just taken in to like experiment on. Which was even kind of like crazier. Because it's like my, and I was talking to my boyfriend about this, something that Resident Evil does very, very well that I've always loved it for is it always has an explanation for something. If it's the BO, if it's the BOWs, if it's the virus, how like, oh, how did the T virus happen? How did they make something like this? Was it like a lab grown thing? No, it literally existed because of flowers found in sub, in, in like sub, sub-Saharan Africa. Like they literally make a reason for everything. Like there is honest to God, like, oh. Why are they like va vampires? Oh, because it's a genetic disease that forces them to to like drink blood or else or else they die. Like, yes, it mm -hmm. sounds fantastical and kind of stupid, but like it's an explanation. They try to make everything grounded, which I think is so fucking 
in a series like Resident Evil, it's so like it's so um what's what what is the word? Um it's so it's just so awesome as a as like a story builder and a lore person to see like they have a reason for everything. I, I think something even to build off of, happen. I think even to build off that I know like people uh were looking for like Oh, is Resident Evil going to go like full anthology where they toss like um, the previously existing like logic like out the window? I'm just like, yeah, no, they, they are going to somehow in some way always tie everything like back to a virus or some new kind of like parasite or whatever. But it, yeah. it's cool seeing how they like justify. Oh, OK, this is probably the worst justification for <laughs> that they give the game. Um, I don't know. Heisenberg can control magnets and metal because he has like a super electric heart. Like literally, like, his do- his his organs and his heart are machines. Yeah. It's, How? How? <laughs> that boy's Magneto. Oh, dude, have you guys seen the mod where someone literally replaces a character model with Magneto? No. It it is so beautiful. <laughs> but I, I have I will seen link the that. mod of Chris in a banana hammock. Because I had seven people send it to me. Oh Jesus my god, Christ. they know you. Oh yeah, I'm obviously people just I'm just like this. Or the one where where baby where uh, where where Chris was the baby's head and baby's head was on Chris. That was, oh, weird. That was weird. <laughs> I, did, I did not um, like that. That was uncomfortable. I will say when I when when we get to the Benev- Beneviento house, uh, which is by far probably the most terrifying uh, uh, chapter in the game. And so much um, was a fear of a fear of dolls. I fucking hated it. <laughs> I, I will say on repeat okay. playthroughs, it isn't as effective just because you know there's not much gameplay so the puzzles you kind of go through it as you can but that first visit is so fucking memorable it's like this big giant set piece where yeah it takes your weapons away go around this creepy house solve puzzles mm-hmm. and um, man, um as, as soon as you get to that hallway when you see the umbilical cord going down you're like oh no what, what's going no, down and you go I further was, down it was, just- it was funny because i just i just got i just got done like a month ago playing visage on for on stream and there's a lot of like things to do with like umbilical cords and there's a baby and stuff involved and it was like it was reminiscent of that i was like oh shit am i back in visage like what's happening mm-hmm. and, and um <laughs> I, I i wanted to say this though real quick bef- uh before uh y'all interject um is that as soon as i got to the beneviento area I came across, you know, when I came, when you come across like the grave and like all the flowers and stuff, I saw those flowers and I was like, those are important. I bet you they're hallucinogenic. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking called it. I was like, I literally called it. I was like, I, I was like, those flowers, they don't just place flowers there for any reason because they're pretty in this is Resident Evil. So those, those are causing me to be, to hallucinate. And I bet you that's where uh, the Beneviento woman uh, gets her little her yeah, technique, I, you know. That, I, that I believe whole there's area, a... hold on, wait, hold on, actually. So the whole area gave me PT vibes. And, mm. fe- and the fetus monster gave me, like, PT vibes because the weird fetus in the sink. And I think this makes complete total sense because after Resident Evil 7 had come out, there was rumors that released that Capcom scooped up a bunch of old Kojima production people that worked on PT to work on Resident Evil. And apparently it was a lot of high profile people. And I'm just, and that whole time I was playing that house, I went, man, this is PT or this reminds me of PT. Mm. And then I saw the baby monster. I'm like, this is PT. So I'm starting to think that those rumors were correct because so, uh... like, that just felt completely like PT in, in, in a good way. Like, like, like it wasn't like a copy. It was like all those, if, if it is true, all those developers were like, fuck you, we're going to make PT. But if we, even if we have to do it like this, and it was the scariest segment in the whole goddamn game. And I literally screamed and I literally felt like my heart. Cause I don't like fetuses and I don't like dolls. So I hated it in the well, best way possible. To, um, to, so, to your point real quick, Corey, um, for, for your flower thing, there, there is a note that like explicitly says like that, that is the thing. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. Um, also I'm Donna's saying, very, very, very pretty. Yeah. Sorry, I, 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 I'm, I'm just saying that as soon as I saw the flowers, it was like, got you. Yeah. Um, 
I will say, uh, so Canty Unplugged said in the chat, I, I'll point them out. Uh, they said the sound design there is what makes it. Um, 100%, the Beneviento area visually is absolutely gorgeous, but the sound da, design. Da, da, da. Yeah, da, da. the sound design for that fucking baby is so goddamn terrifying. Um, like, Wait, did, did either of you get killed by the baby? No. Oh god, no. I, I was I like saw, from I saw what it looks like on YouTube and the baby just uh, like grabs your legs and like shoves your body down its throat. Oh, and it's no. like it's like laughing and crying and then like sometimes it'll say yummy. Yeah, oh, it'll, no. it'll say yum yum or something like that. Uh, yeah. Um, anyways, so when you get to the actual room at the end of that area, like where you have to turn around and go back because you have the fuse or whatever, you have the fuse box. Mm -hmm. Um, I noticed you could crawl under the bed before I went back, and I was like, "You're gonna no. have to do it." Yeah, <laughs> no, apparently you get caught no. if you I crawl was under the bed. No, no, no. I used to bed. I used to bed twice. It, it doesn't get you. No, yeah. So what I did is like, the for, by the way, when I follow the umbilical cord, I heard something like. Sl slurping itself out of the wall. I don't even know what, what to call it. It just it was a very wet sound. And it was like I heard crying and like something falling out of a doorway or something, and then something coming down the hall. And I ran, I just turned around and I booked it. I was like, I don't I don't care what the fuck that is. I don't want to see it. I don't know what it is. It sounds terrifying. I just ran. So then when I got the fuse box and I went back. And I was like, okay, okay, it's fine. We got the fuse box. We're going down the hallway, and I just, it just, it's right there in your face. And I screamed yeah. so loud. I do and like how, like every other Resident Evil villain, you can defeat it with a table. It can't learn how to go through tables. So if you just go the other way through a table, that that baby gets confused. How, how did you, you like? How did you like it when you're when you're coming back from? Uh, I think it's when you grab the fuse. It just like burst down the fucking door. And it's like no. Nope. And Ethan, honest to God, screams. <laughs> Dude, I was like, like, that's me, Ethan. That was me. When we were at the elevator and that thing is coming down the hallway, I'm like, oh God. I'm like, elevator, <laughs> fucking move. Fucking yeah, move. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> when, when i was oh hiding under the bed um cause I, uh, like either way you face it like goes on both sides of the bed and like as it was behind me i'm like oh god do not fucking grab me like drag me out from under the bed please oh fucking god please no. <laughs> just wait you wait before it goes to the other side of the bed and you crawl out and just run you see i didn't do that i waited for it to like exit out of the area completely yeah because because if you if so if you if you stay in the cabinet which again tiny little fetus arms can't open cabinets i don't I don't know. If you stay in the cabinet long enough and it leaves the room, then it instantly teleports back upstairs. So you, which I, which I liked, because I'm not a fan of games where things just like mindlessly chase you, not counting Mr. X and Nemesis, because those were well done. But like, I liked where if you let it leave the room, it teleported back upstairs. So you didn't need to deal with having to like cart it through a really tough, like, like skinny hall hallway. It instantly teleported back up. So you were able to have like a chance to breathe mm -hmm. and you were able to go like, okay, deep breaths, where do I go? And then again, you, every Resident Evil enemy's big, big villain, which is a chair or a table, the baby can't like you go over a table. So you just like <laughs> cart it with a table. You just go like zoom. Like you just like race it out. You're like, gotta go. 